Hey GED students, super excited to work on this one with you because it directly ties into the non-calculator section of the GED, one that students often just bomb, like, and that's okay. You can miss all five of those questions and still um, pass the GED with a really high score. However, however, it kind of sets the tone. It can stress students out if the first five questions they're struggling with. So let's go ahead and take a look. It says, translate the phrase into an algebraic expression. And then we see this phrase, the distance between negative 5 and F on a number line. So first of all, what are they asking us to do? Well, basically, they're just saying translate. We're translating the phrase, some English words, into an algebraic expression. An algebraic expression is a phrase, but instead of it being in words, it's in our symbols that we use in mathematics, our numbers, our operation symbols like plus, minus, yada, 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 and um, variables, letters. And this is how we kind of build phrases in math. And so we have this phrase, the distance between negative five and F on a number line. Now, hopefully you remember that distance has to do with subtraction. So I'm being asked to subtract those two numbers, those two things, negative five and F. But that's not the only thing you need to know about distance, okay? So I write this down, highlight it, I don't know, tattoo it on your forehead, whatever you need to do to remember that distance is always positive. Not every subtraction problem ends up positive, but if they tell you to find the distance, you better rig it so your answer or your expression would result in a positive number. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that. So first of all, it says the difference between negative five and F. And, you know, you might be wondering like which order to do it in, because like if we had two numbers, like say the distance between, um, I don't know, five and 11, and we wanted to make sure we had a positive answer, we would flip the order around. We'd just take the bigger number first and then minus the smaller number, and that'd be a really easy way to make sure our answer was positive. However, here, we don't know what one of these numbers is. Like one of them's a known value, negative five, but the other one's a variable, meaning it's an unknown value. You don't know if it's bigger than negative five or smaller than negative five. So you're not sure which order would make a positive. It might be if you put the negative five first and then you subtracted the F, or it might be if you put the F first and then you subtracted negative five. Now notice I have two minuses there in that expression and that's correct. Minus negative five is not the same as minus five. Uh, so make sure you have both of those there. This is because it's distance and this is because it's the number negative five. All right, that being said, we have a little problem now. <laughs> we don't know which one of these is positive. One would result in a positive answer and one would result in a negative answer. The same basic number, but one being positive, one being negative, depending on which order we go in. So how do we guarantee that it's gonna be a positive answer when we don't know the numbers? That's when you need this lovely new operation we learned absolute value. Absolute value is a number's distance from zero on a number line, meaning it's distance. It's always positive. So if you want to express a distance expression, use absolute value bars. Those straight up and down bars are the symbols we use for that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enclose my entire expression, whichever one I do, okay? It doesn't matter if they're the same in absolute value bars. And what that says is do the subtraction. We work inside to outside in math. So do the subtraction inside first. And then whatever answer you get, make it positive. Now you might be saying, Kate, how do I do the subtraction? And the answer is you, you don't. All I did was ask you to write an expression. And so either one of these are, are an expression to represent what I just said. It's translated. And they're both totally correct. Um, there is something to note though. I would expect this one to be in the answer key if this was the problem on the GED. Uh, just because this one has an extra little trick that I don't think is that big of a deal, have never seen it on a GED example. But just for those of you who are comfortable with negatives, this particular expression could be written more simply.
meaning it could be simplified. A lot of you guys know that subtracting a negative number, subtracting a negative number is the same as adding the inverse, the positive number. And so that could also be written as the absolute value of f plus 5. And then I get a lot of students mad at me like, Kate, I thought you said that it has to be subtraction. Well, yeah, but subtracting a negative number is the same as adding the positive of that number. And so in math, whenever two things are equivalent, we can trade one thing out for each other. So look at that. We wrote three different expressions that would be a translation of this. Now, good news. You might be freaking out like, but which one would I put on the GED? The GED will absolutely for this problem be multiple choice and they won't have all three. They'll just have one of them. And most likely, like I said, I would expect it to be this one. So don't panic about, oh my God, I have to learn all the ways. <laughs> uh, but do be wise enough that you can pick out a logical way from the multiple choice. All right. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.